to somebody from sin that you will save somebody's soul that you will cause them right right now to make that decision to give their hearts to you thank you now for hearing and for answering our prayers for we ask it all in the mighty name of jesus and let everybody everywhere say amen and amen bless his holy name and so my brothers and sisters my friends the viewers indeed it is a blessing yes for us to be here again to listen to the word of the lord god and so yes this evening we will look at another a simple subject and i just decided just to uh, take it light this evening no form of heavier stuff even as we look into the word of god which is sweet which has numerous lessons for us and so tonight yes tonight even as we get to our bibles i do hope and trust you have yours in whatever form you have it or at least make sure uh, that you will take note of the various texts uh, sometimes we just quote them you can note them uh, even as we quote them are you hearing me somebody yes and so this evening we we are using a simple topic yes we are saying oh god you you oh lord you come to our rescue he comes to our rescue are you hearing me somebody he comes to our rescue and that is our topic this evening and so yes yes i will uh, uh, start by mentioning the fact that we all know we all know hear me somebody we all know to a great extent i know that there are maybe a few of us on the platform who may not be conversant with uh, some of the uh, uh, stories from the Bible or some of even the texts uh, that we mentioned but yes we know that many of us would be and we are catering for everybody just try your best uh, to follow us and I know the Holy Spirit will help you are you with me somebody bless the name of the Lord and so we are saying many of us have been acquainted with the story of the children of Israel yes yes and as to what happened to get them there time will not allow us to delve into that right now but we do know that the children of israel yes would have uh, uh, been there in egyptian bondage for over uh, 430 years yes they were enslaved uh, they were abused they were uh, subjugated yes they were uh, uh, exploited uh, uh, whilst they were there in egyptian bondage uh, the egyptians used them and abused them them. are you with me somebody for 430 years uh, that generation came after a generation and even many of them actually forgot as it were the will of God and exactly how they were to live and the fact that they were God's special people but God would not abandon his people are you with me somebody God called Moses uh, prepared Moses uh, appointed Moses uh, and sent Moses to Pharaoh many of us know the story declaring to fear oh fear let my people go God says uh, that they may serve me and we know how a uh, fear rebelled he hardened his heart he uh, rebelled against uh, the instruction which God gave to him but God would not leave his people to continue to suffer in Egyptian bondage oh no 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 our God loves his people people and whatever it takes for God to deliver his people I'm telling you uh, children of God you don't worry about your struggles uh, don't worry about what people are doing to you you just continue to put your trust in God because if God has to send fire to deliver his people my God will send fire if he has to send plague brimstone whatever he must do he will do it for the deliverance of his people and we have proven that where his people uh, were concerned there in Egyptian bondage and so yes he sent plague after plague after plague nine plagues uh, a fear or rebelled but I can't get into it now because of time but he sent uh, the last plague we know all the firstborns were uh, slain but the children of Israel uh, were protected uh, because they had the symbol of the blood uh, and God had said when I uh, hallelujah i see the blood i will 
pass over you. And so the homes of God's children was protected. Won't somebody say amen this evening? And so, yes, yes, we know the story. Even the firstborn of fear was slain. And that was too much for him. He yielded and so he released the people of God. And so, yes, they packed up all of their belongings, a massive throng, because they had a significantly multiplied, even whilst in Egyptian bondage. And so, yes, they got up that day. Yes, they were ready. And they marched out with all their possessions, a vast, a mighty throng. They didn't know exactly exactly where they were going uh, but they were heading to the wilderness uh, and they knew uh, that the Lord knows the way through the wilderness uh, all they needed to do uh, was to follow as Moses led them God was in charge uh, because in the day there was a pillar of cloud uh, guiding them are you hearing me somebody what a wonderful God in the night uh, there was a pillar of fire the presence and the evidence of God's presence was there for his people and so he led them and we all know the story as to a number of things which happened but for the saving of time I'm jumping to one of the accounts right there in the numbers chapter 21 where did I say I said numbers yes the book of numbers Genesis Exodus Leviticus then numbers it's chapter 21 chapter 21 and so yes as they traveled we're looking at one of their experience let's just jump down to verse 4 for the saving of time the Bible tells us here it says and they journeyed from Mount Hor are you with me somebody yes and they journeyed uh, from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to come past the land of Edom. Now, what was happening here? So, as they journeyed, they had reached this point, and we can't look back at all the historical information, but as they reached uh, this point, the Bible is telling us, uh, helping us to understand uh, that the children of Israel, on their journey towards the promised land, uh, they somehow had to detour at this point. Why did they have to detour? Because as they approached the Edomites and the Edomite king are asking for passage through Edom to make their way easier. The Edomites uh, were suspicious of them. The Edomites uh, didn't like them. The Edomites were saying this large group and they heard oh God had helped them to overcome. They said no we are not allowing you a, a passage to, to to go through and so they had to detour they had to travel as they come past the land of Edom they had to travel a southward through Arabia then eastward then northward as it were to pass the east of Edom and Moab so they were really going all around and guess what the Bible tells us there the Bible said even as they come past the land of Edom it goes on to say that the soul of the people was what was what somebody the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way look at that the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way and you know there are, are a number of reasons why they got discouraged there are some of us who we have started our Christian journey we are traveling on the way to glory on that Christian pathway and for some reason or the other some of us are growing discouraged I wonder if somebody is following me this evening yes they are are getting God's people the children of Israel they were getting discouraged for some of the reasons two of the main reasons number one the place that they were traveling through that uh, a plain barren
foreign plane called Arabian was no ordinary place. It was most times it was very hot and it was very dry and it was strewn with stones and sand. So the trek was kind of rough, was kind of laborious and the people somehow couldn't deal with it. They thought that is. But apart from that, the other issue was that the people they realized that as they traveled through the plain of Araba, the next issue was that they recognized that their backs, <laughs> hear me somebody, their backs were turned to Canaan, the promised land, the place that they were heading for. And as a result of that, many of them uh, uh, got discouraged uh, when they were traveling on the way and I'm telling you there are many of us today uh, even as we travel uh, this Christian journey there are many of us who are becoming discouraged some of us yes I've heard persons explain uh, yes we had read we had read uh, in Matthew chapter 6 uh, and verse 33 where the Bible declared uh, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness and all all these are things uh, the things uh, that you need uh, the things that God sees as good for you all these uh, things uh, shall be somebody added unto you and they are saying I've accepted Jesus I've accepted him uh, uh, so long I've been trusting uh, in him I've been trying my best uh, to obey him uh, and I'm going up in age now a young lady said uh, and somehow I still uh, can't find a husband I thought God said uh, he was gonna uh, uh, provide all that I need and so she declared that her soul had grown discouraged many people had plans to further their education to do some studies but somehow it seems like things are not working out and they are getting discouraged many of us hear me somebody are trying a job I spoke with somebody who had applied to five jobs did five interviews one after the other did well at all the interviews uh, was accepted but the single issue was the sabbath because a sabbath uh, no job and so we can understand uh, they are getting discouraged uh, but i want somebody to understand today uh, that if you would just look back look back uh, and understand uh, that the god whom we serve i believe uh, he's still a good god i believe uh, that god hear me somebody inspiration tells us uh, that the lord has uh, a thousand ways uh, to provide for his people of which we know not one uh, you better know uh, that the fact that you have health and strength uh, to go and look for a job uh, it means uh, that god is still good to you uh, are you hearing me somebody it means that God has been good to you. That yes, you have been getting uh, uh, some amount of blessing. Uh, and I'm saying to you, don't give up. Uh, uh, just keep pressing on. Uh, just keep trusting Jesus. Keep putting your faith in him. Uh, uh, don't get discouraged because of the way. You know, one young lady tells me that uh, my pay is just a little bit. Uh, and you are telling me that I have to give out of this little bit but I helped her to know that it is because God has provided for you a little bit why there is a one-tenth of it if it was zero one-tenth would be zero but God has given you something and that is why you can faithfully return from what he has provided you. I want to encourage somebody to hold on to Jesus. Continue to serve him. Continue to trust him. I hear one songwriter say roll back the curtains of memories just show me where you brought me from and where I could have been if you would all look back in your life uh, there were many a times uh, when you were in a 
it irrespective of how young you were and God came through for you are you hearing me somebody yes I can recount time after time after time every one of you whether you're a church member or a visiting friends there has been time in the past when you were in a quagmire when things were rough and things were tougher but God came to your rescue he either provided that money he flew a trap for you he protected you from a gunman he did something I'm saying every one of us have reasons to give God thanks keep trusting in the Lord and so the children of Israel the Bible tells me the Bible tells me that their soul became discouraged because of the way and when I look at it the Bible tells me and the people <laughs> look at this somebody the Bible says and the people speak against God and against Moses whoa whoa look at this though faithful Moses who had sacrificed so much who has borne so much abuse uh, to be there for the people they were now speaking uh, against the Moses hear me they were speaking uh, against the God and some of us you know we may have been uh, and I recognize some of us are overly sensitive some of us uh, we can't take persons saying anything against us but just remember that Jesus tells us blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and what and what and say all manner of evil against you he says rejoice and be exceedingly glad if you're gonna be a child of God you better know that Satan is still the accuser of the brethren and so I'm telling you somebody, yes, the people start to speak, start to accuse, start to complain against God and against Moses. Now what were, were, were they complaining about? The Bible tells us that they spake against them. They said, wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to do what? <laughs> Look at that. Unbelievable. Wherefore? The people are saying, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Look at that. Does that connect? Is that uh, intellectually sound? Oh no, it couldn't be at all. You know why? Because if God had wanted to kill them, he would have killed them already by the Red Sea. Are you hearing me? When they were thirsty, God could have allowed them to have died of thirst but he gave them water from a flint rock are you with me somebody when they were hungry he provided manna for them whatever they needed a god was there for them and now the people the same people are saying oh god how is it that you have brought us you have brought us to die in the wilderness and do you know that many of us and the it might even be all of us uh, we are very much like uh, the children of Israel uh, we are complaining complaining uh, about everything God has been there for us God has been good for us uh, in the past we can remember we have had so many issues uh, but God has come through for us uh, I'm saying that many of us and over and over in our lives we have proven to be very ungrateful am i telling the truth somebody yes we have been ungrateful to god because i want you to know tonight my brother i want you to know my sister that god is good to his people yes even in this covid time you know i go to church and i've gone to various churches with the few little people who can gather and when i look upon the people the majority of them or i can see all of them they look so nice all you over there look how you look good yes things are rough uh, things are tough uh, financially you may be down uh, there may be issues even with your health uh, but the truth is God is still good 
to you yes the problem is sometimes uh, we are worried about the Joneses uh, many people are looking on others uh, and what kind of vehicle they drive uh, and how the house look uh, and what they eat for dinner but let me tell you something uh, if all you have this evening uh, to eat uh, is crackers uh, and water just eat up your crackers uh, and drink up your water and release that gas and say thank you Jesus and go to your bed you it could be that you didn't have a thing at all God is still good to his people and he's good to you are you hearing me somebody he has always been there and I don't know about you but for me you know I heard an old song an old song some years ago my father was playing it and I loved to play it when I was a little boy it was an old song then and it was by Charlie Pride Charlie Pride said if you can see and if you can walk and if you can hear and if you can talk then you better be grateful for what you have got for to some folks these things would mean a lot I don't know about you my brethren but every morning I wake up when I turn and the Lord shakes me and wakes me up when I see that my hand can move and my feet can move and my mind is still intact uh, and I can breathe uh, the first thing I have to do uh, I have to open my mouth uh, and shout uh, hallelujah because I could have been dead uh, something else could have happened to me uh, I tell you you have more than what to give God thanks for you can wake up and get up uh, and walk out of your house free and go on the road that is a blessing and hear me somebody even if you have some disability but you are watching us tonight the fact that you are watching us tonight even with the translations we thank them so much it means that God is still good to you praise the name of the Lord won't you just worship him somebody we all have reasons to give the Lord thanks for uh, somebody says to me uh, uh, that if you have uh, a Mercedes Benz uh, give God thanks for it uh, if all you have uh, is an older Corolla you still need to give God thanks uh, because you could have only had a motorbike uh, and if you had a, have a motorbike uh, you need to still give God thanks uh, you could have only had a manual a bike or bicycle we call it uh, or if you uh, don't have uh, a bicycle uh, still give God thanks because it could just be here uh, your two wheel mobile but somebody better know that the two-wheel mobile is very important I prefer to have my two-wheel mobile than to have a Mercedes-Benz hear me somebody are you with me somebody yes our God is good and they say even if you your your two-wheel mobile is not up and running and but you are lying down in your bed and you can still give God thanks you need to give God thanks uh, for there is still life uh, and God's blessing uh, is upon you all I'm saying uh, out there irrespective of your circumstances uh, irrespective of your challenges uh, irrespective of your issues our God is good to his people yes he is good to us uh, and so the children of Israel and us too often have been quite ungrateful but the bible tells us here uh, that and our soul the, the bible tells us wherefore have he brought us up out of egypt to die in the wilderness he says hear what they say for hear, hear what the complaints were look at that unbelievable they said for there is no what bread neither is there any water look at that and our soul hateth this what this light bread <laughs> look at this they said there is no bread there is no water 
God has been providing for them miraculously every day. But they were complaining. It's just that they did not appreciate what God was giving to them. There is no bread. And look at that. Our souls, they say, hates uh, this light bread. You know what the word translated there, light. The only time it's found in the entire Bible, it means to be of low esteem. That means this uh, bread is like a cheap bread. You know what? Because their minds were on the onions and the garlics and the highly seasoned meats and foods uh, that were there in Egypt. Uh, and so now they had become ungrateful. Uh, now they were disrespecting uh, a God's bread uh, which he had provided for them, which were nourishing uh, their bodies and keeping them uh, healthy and strong. Uh, as a matter of a fact, God was so good to Israel uh, that when you read uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 which recounts some of the experiences it tells you there i believe in verse 21 of nehemiah chapter 9 that of the children of israel not one of them clothes had worn out not one of them as they traveled did their foot swell because it said god preserved them god kept them there was no weak one nor feeble one against them a god was so good to them and they were no complaining guess what they were complaining about this very bread hear me somebody this bread was not baked by time and patience bakery it was not baked by regal bakery or purity bakery or salmon bakery or any of these bakeries it was prepared in glory it was sent down from God that was good for their souls but they didn't appreciate it they didn't appreciate it and there are some of us who are being very ungrateful with many things with what God has blessed us we are not appreciating uh, a gentleman out there hear me God may have blessed you with a good wife she might not be any hot 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 at number but she a hot number in character she has been faithful to you uh, taking care of you yes she has been a godly woman washing your clothes and doing her part uh, and going out working hard uh, and coming in uh, but somehow your eyes are turned out there you are unappreciative of what god has done for you and you are looking out there for some hot number whether you're a church member or a non-member in the name of jesus repent like a john the baptist lady you might have that godly man he's trying his best he might not be rich he might not be any flashy boy but he's doing his thing and with help he will get better but you're looking out there you better repent don't disregard or being unappreciative of the blessings which God has so freely bestowed upon us are you hearing me somebody yes indeed and so many of them and many a times we believe that God is not taking care of us God is not blessing us because we can't see a whole week supply because we can't see six months supply of provisions but if you remember Exodus chapter 16 a God provided for them every day every day they had to go out every day they had to go back in faith to the Lord and Jesus in his model prayer he said Lord provide us the over what daily bread God wants hear me somebody when you have come to him yesterday and he has provided for you he wants you to come back to him today why it's really a relationship that he wants to have with you are you hearing me somebody God in his wisdom knows that he would give if he would give many of us a whole six months or a year's provisions or supply many of us will forget about him yes we would turn our backs on him but when we have to come to him the relationship remains sweeter are you hearing me somebody and so the bible tells us here it tells us here they talk about the bread they talk about the fact that it was a light bread but the bible tells us next it says and the lord sent what fiery fiery serpents among the people 
and they what beat the people and much of the people died trouble no yes uh, they were there murmuring against moses uh, uh, complaining against god uh, they were there uh, demonstrating uh, their ingratitude uh, the next thing we know uh, when they woke up the next morning uh, when they go to relieve themselves uh, there were serpents there uh, uh, trouble no uh, when they lie down in their bed a uh, uh, serpents there snakes there biting them uh, uh, when they go to cook the pot uh, when they put on the pot snakes in the pot uh, and everywhere uh, uh, there were snakes the bible says fiery serpent and fire is from the root word translated from a root uh, that means to burn in other words uh, those snakes uh, were venomous uh, and uh, the, the, the bite from that snake uh, causes a massive inflammation uh, which uh, leads to death are you with me somebody so many of them were suffering uh, many of them were dying uh, and somebody ought to know somebody ought to understand uh, it is not that God directly sent fiery serpents for when you go to deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 15 we understand that there in Arabia, where they were traveling through there were always snakes there it was a place that was infested with snakes and scorpions and other uh, venomous uh, creatures are you with me somebody but every day god was working a miracle for his people every day god was keeping them god was was protecting them God was standing by them but when they get ungrateful now when they get ungrateful what they have done they were pushing away God pushing away his protection pushing away his blessing and as a result of that the serpents came upon them you better be careful today somebody that we are not driving away God's mercy that is how his mercy runs out not that God's mercy changed but when he extends his love to you and his mercy to you and we continually spurn it it will have to be withdrawn by God because God respects your free will and your decision are you with me somebody yes indeed and so they were in trouble now but what did the people do what was their attitude i'm coming down now i'm going real fast the bible tells me here the bible tells me here that as the lord sent the fiery serpents many of them were bitten many of them were stricken and many of them died but verse 7 says therefore the people came to who the people came to the same moses the people came to moses and said no so 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 that same moses who they were talking against him they were abusing him uh, verbally they were accusing him uh, of carrying them into the wilderness to die and they they they, they, they are disrespected the man of god the same moses who they were disrespecting they had to run come back to the same moses look at that uh, and my bible tells me that the people came to moses and they said we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee look what they are asking Moses to do now they are saying Moses please pray unto the Lord uh, that he take away the fiery serpents from us and guess what the Bible tells me the Bible tells me that Moses prayed for the people what a man of God hear me somebody as a leader of God's people you can't be over sensitive I wonder how some of us we are so sensitive everything we take to heart everything we hold on to for days and days and months and months I do you something last year and this year you're still vexed with me what is that brethren God says we should learn how to forgive but I thank God that the man of God Moses he wasn't vindicated 
sensitive. He wasn't overly sensitive, but he was demonstrating the character of God. He didn't hold it against the people. But when the same people came, they acknowledged their transgressions like David did. They said, we have sinned. They repented. They said, please, Moses, pray to God for us. And the humble man of God loved the people. He forgave the people and he prayed to the Lord. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. And I'm saying not only leaders in the church should be like this, but every one of us who call ourselves Christians, this ought to be our attitude. Is the church with me? And so I'm coming down. I'm coming down. The Bible tells me here, it tells me in uh, verse 8. Yes. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, mm -hmm, and set it upon a pole, like an ensign, like an army banner's pole. Yes. Set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live praise the name of the lord god but I, I have a challenge though the people were bitten by venomous serpents i remember hezekiah in hezekiah's story when he had that infection he had that boil he was instructed uh, to to make a poultice uh, yes herbs and stuff and put on that and it pulled out uh, uh, the infection uh, and reduced uh, the inflammation uh, that somehow kind of make a little sense but the people are getting snake bite and uh, uh, the remedy for snake bite uh, is a bronze serpent upon a pole uh, that somehow doesn't connect uh, but let me tell you something it might not be logical uh, while everybody else is keeping Sunday that God is still saying remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy his will might not seem right while everybody else is saying uh, the poor kids sweet is sweet is sweet but in Leviticus 11 verse 7 he had said and the swine though he defied the hoof and be cloven footed he is unclean unto you of his flesh you shall not eat whatever God says is right even if it seems strange do what God says are you with me somebody yes indeed and so it didn't make sense and if you're a scientific and if there were people who are sophisticated bronze serpent upon a pole that doesn't make sense but this is a faith business and we need to trust in the Lord whatever his word says I want you to know that there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey the words of the Lord God and so Moses obeyed the Bible tells me that Moses verse 9 he made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten a man when he beheld the serpent of brass when he looked upon it in faith hear me somebody not just a casual look when he looked upon it the bible says he lived praise his holy name many had looked upon it they understood that that symbol hear me somebody that symbol was a symbol of the cross it was a symbol of the messiah christ who was to come to die for all of our sins they knew that when they looked upon it it couldn't just be a casual look for if they made a casual look they would have gotten no result but when they looked in faith Faith, uh, when they trusted in God in his mercy in his goodness uh, which keeps running after us uh, when they looked hallelujah they would instantly receive healing uh, and the Bible said uh, that they lived uh, and so I want you to know tonight I better close it off uh, because of time I want somebody to know uh, yes the children of Israel uh, had messed up yes they were ungrateful uh, 
perspective of how good God was to them. But God forgave them when they came to him and repented. And my God came to their rescue. Are you hearing me somebody? My God, he came to their rescue. And many of us have messed up today. Many of you are looking at me right now. You are still living in sin. Many of you were serving the Lord and you turned your back on the Lord. But God is still there. He is ready tonight to come to your rescue. Not only to save you from sickness or diseases or financial issues or family issues. He wants to come to your rescue and to save you from sin like he saved the children of Israel. Thank God tonight that the God whom we serve is a God who comes, praise the Lord. He comes to our rescue. Don't you want him to do that work in your life tonight? Don't you want him to save you tonight? Don't you want him to transform your heart, your soul tonight? Don't you want him to set you free from the enemy's chains tonight? Don't you want the deliverance that Jesus gives? Just look upon him tonight. Trust in him tonight. Repent of your sin tonight. Accept him tonight. For Jesus is ready to come to your rescue. Just like he came to the rescue of the children of Israel. Won't you praise the Lord out there somebody. As our sister sings for us. Yes, indeed. Bless his holy name. Once my soul Bless the name of the Lord. was astray mm. from the heavenly way. Is that your experience tonight? And it was a rain and fire. Is that your situation tonight, somebody? Mm. But my Savior, in what a God, what a God, gave me peace from above. He's coming to your rescue, coming to your rescue. Bless his holy name. Down his coming to your rescue. For me. Mm. What a God, praise sir. God. Come on, somebody. Oh, I was near to despair when he came. Think the link should be appearing. It should be appearing on the screen. And it showed. There's no time to lose. No time to waste. Somebody. Jesus wants to reach down and rescue you, young man. He wants to rescue you, my brother. And gave me gladness complete. When he reached down he wants his hands for He wants to rescue you, somebody. He wants to deliver you. Bless his name. When he reached As he reaches down to you. Won't you just reach up to him right, right now? Won't you just click? Yeah.